Hello everyone. Uh, on this session, we will be discussing Euro and ZD. So remember that um, Euro and ZD, Euro AUD, they tend to have similar movement whenever you're trading them within the market. So one of the reasons why they have a bit of like similarities when you're trading them is because uh, New Zealand and Australia, they are regarded as one of the largest gold producers and gold distributors around the world. So for uh, right now, let's look at Euro and ZD. So looking at Euro NZD from a monthly time frame, again, the most important thing about like doing your analysis, especially top down analysis, is to understand where price has the likelihood of heading to, right? So this is not mainly for um, uh, like on a monthly time frame, higher time frame, it's not for entry. It's basically just to understand where the market uh, uh, it has the potential of going to and then also minimizes the noise when you are on higher time frame. The higher you move up the time frame, the less noise you start having within the market. So question is like, what are things that create uh, noise within the market or that bring forth noise within the market? So basically you've got things like um, economic events, you've got fundamentals as well. Uh, those are the things <clears throat> that create a bit of volatility within the market, resulting in a bit of spikes upwards or down downwards due to um, the market reacting to those news being released. So now looking at the Euro NZD from a monthly time frame. So we were in a bit of a consolidation. Uh, we recently broke above it, but we have yet to a significantly break above it. So the market retested there, 61 point, uh, the 50% Fibonacci retracement level on a monthly time frame, and then kind of like retraced back again to where it, in, uh, it originally broke out of. So we can expect the market to kind of give us a bit of a deeper correction, whereby it will retest the 61.8 FIB level before the price can continue declining in value. So remember that like the 61.8 FIB level, the 50% FIB level, the 38.6 FIB level, the 78.6 FIB level, those ones are regarded as the continuations level. So those are the ones that continue with the direction of the trend. So the market, when it tests the 61.8 FIB level, 50% FIB level, that will result in the market uh, retracing and pushing a bit further to the downside. So, okay. So now we do understand what has occurred, right? So if uh, you're within my team, you know that like uh, these positions here, what has occurred here, uh, how the banks were maneuvering around this area before they had that push to the upside. So now let's look at this area here. Right. So this is our main objective. So um, initially, like when I was starting to like um, show people or like kind of like help people on like how to actually approach the chart, I would normally say like split your charts into two. Uh, the reason why you're splitting your chart into two is to understand historical data. Right. And then understand current data. Right in order to make decision based on the historical data. Because like in uh, Forex, the first thing that you, the one of the things that uh, you need to know is that like each and every candlestick basically represents the receipts of the transactions made by institutional players, right? So if you understand their receipts, if you understand their paper trail, that allows you to kind of like be in a position where you can anticipate or try to uh, like kind of like navigate and try to move uh, or mimic their moves as well. So move roughly the same as them. Uh, so right now when you're looking at the market, here we had an impulsive move, right? We had an impulsive move. So after we had an impulsive move, we had a correction in the form of a consolidation, right? So after we had that correction in the form of a consolidation, now the market made that impulsive move, pushing price to the upside, breaking above that consolidation. So now the market came back to that consolidation to retest the level in which it broke out of. When we're talking about the level in which it broke out of, we're talking about the resistance of the consolidation box or the consolidation area. So remember that we've got two types of consolidation. We've got the distribution phase and we've got the accumulation phase. So the distribution phase leads to, an, uh, uh, leads to a downtrend while the accumulation phase leads to a downtrend. Uh, lead, uh, the accumulation phase leads to a uptrend, right? The distribution phase leads to a downtrend. Accumulation phase leads to an uptrend. So basically where the consolidation is located does play a key role, right? So right now uh, the consolidation acted as an accumulation phase that led to an uptrend, right? So this is an impulse correction. We're currently within the last leg of the impulsive phase. So again, whenever you're analyzing look for things that might result in price pushing to the upside. For instance, this is one of the reasons why the, mar uh, the market has the likelihood of pushing to the upside because we have an unfilled, we have an unfilled tail. 
right? So remember that when you are within the market, the, uh, the market has the likelihood of filling the tails which were created initial. The market will come back to fill that tail. It might take longer, but at some point it will come back to fill that tail. So right now we are currently looking at the market and say, okay, so now if I'm looking at the market and then I've had this retracement, what was the reason for this retracement, right? Now remember that the depth of the correction depends on the amount of retail traders coming into the market and placing long positions. That's the reason why we have this retracement. At this particular time, the amount of retail traders coming into the market, they are the ones that facilitate the amount of profit taking that institutional players can take. Similar to these positions here with that low market push into the upside. So the amount of retail traders coming into the market and placing long position does determine if the market will correct deeper. So the depth of the correction does play a key role within the market. So right now the market retested the level in which it broke out of, which confluences with the retest of the monthly demand zone. So we will be looking for a potential push to the upside in order to complete the last leg of the three cycles that makes up a wave. So now let's move to a weekly time frame. So now when you move to a weekly time frame, basically you can see the retest that has occurred initially. So there's not really much you can deduce from the weekly time frame. Aside from uh, this, you can draw the trend line in which the market broke out of. Currently, the market is retesting the level in which it broke out of, which also confluences with the breakout of the weekly bearish trend line as well. So now let's move to a daily time frame. So now when we move to a daily time frame, there's a lot of things that come into play within the market when you're analyzing, right? So the first step is that understanding which phase are you currently in, right? We, are, we have an impulsive phase. We are currently within the corrective phase, right? So when we're currently within the corrective phase, the corrective phase is in the form of a bearish channel. Right, so we're in the form of a bearish channel. So when we're in the form of a bearish channel, now we start seeing the market pushing a bit further to the up upside advancing. So again, if you can go on a weekly time frame, you start seeing the Dow theory applying in terms of uh, guiding us on whether this is an uptrend or a downtrend. So now when you're looking at it in terms of Dow theory, looking at this area in terms of Dow theory. So basically the Dow theory states that the market will continue being in an uptrend up until a recently formed high has been broken. So we cannot wait for the market to um, break this high before we can consider taking long positions. So this would have been or this is a good great would have been a great area for you to consider taking long position based on the fact that the market has retested the lower trend line of the bearish channel for the third time. So the third retest usually leads to a rejection and a potential push to the upside. So now the market has uh, roughly few more days, probably next week, end of next week, or even more than a month before it can come back to this area here on retest the upper trend line, probably giving us a bit of a rejection as well. So now when we're looking at the market from this perspective, we're saying like, okay, the market made an aggressive push to the upside, right? So we still have what? An inner trend line. We still have an inner trend line, right? So the market is yet to test that inner trend line, but it's trending around it, right? So market is currently retesting the level in which it broke out of, basically around this area. So this is the level in which it broke out of. So it's currently retesting that level, the uh, support level now turned resistance. So at this particular area, we can expect the market to kind of like give us a bit of a retracement, right? So before we can have that push to the upside, remember, this is an impulse. We're currently in the corrective phase. We're looking to complete the last leg of the impulsive phase in attempts to do what? To fill this tail, right? So let's move to a lower time frame. So now when we go to a four hour, four hour time frame, so remember that like whenever you're trading, the most important thing or the one of the things that you're looking for, you're looking for um, to, to, to kind of like um, get into a position with minimum risk involved. Um, so now you've got this outer trend line here. Let's just look at it from this perspective. You've got this trend line. The market is yet to test that trend line, has the likelihood of pushing a bit further to the upside to retest this trend line before we can have a bit of a decline in the value of Euro AUD before we can have a bit of a continuation. So that's one of the things that we will be looking at because right now the market is currently retesting the level in which it broke out of market currently retesting the level in which it broke out of, has the likelihood of spiking to the upside in order to retest the demand 
the supply zone, the four hour supply zone, or it can turn from this area here and then kind of like push price to the downside, retesting this level before we can have a bit of a continuation. So this level also confluences with what? The level in which the market broke out of and also confluences with the demand zone. So we can have the market retesting the level in which it broke out of, giving us a potential spike to the downside in order for the market to retest the demand zone before we can have a bit of a continuation, right? So now let's move to a one hour time frame and kind of like have a feel of what's currently occurring, right? So when you move to a one hour time frame, knowing that the market is currently retesting the level in which it broke out of, right? It's currently retesting the level in which it broke out of, and again, the one thing that we see is that the market made an impulsive face, right? After making an impulsive face, made a corrective face, and then now made the last leg of the impulsive face. So at this particular area, we can start considering taking short position upon the retest of the supply zone that was recently formed on a one hour time frame while maintaining a proper risk to reward ratio in order for us to push the price a bit further to the downside to retest the demand zone before we can have a bit of a continuation. So remember that like whenever the three cycles have been completed, what normally occurs is that the market will retrace from another three cycle before a continuation. So we can see a bit of a retracement before we can get a bit of a continuation. So we've had an impulse correction and then the impulsive phase. So basically we are at the tip of the, th of the third phase. So the three cycles that makes up a wave, they have been completed. We've got a wave that has been completed. Now we're just looking for potential shorting opportunities pushing price to the downside before we can have a bit of a continuation. So this is something that I'll probably be looking at. And then again, when you start understanding what is required within the market for you to place a trade or get out of a trade or enter a trade, um, basically what you need to understand is that the role that the uh, retail traders or the roles that traders play within the market. So remember that whenever you're trading, the first question you need to ask yourself is that will the institutional players continue buying at this particular price level or will they lower the price in order for them to get some or their remaining positions placed before they can push the price a bit further to the upside, right? So if you're already thinking that, oh, okay, what I'm, I'm looking at, I'm looking at uh, institutional players, coming within the market and pushing the price to the upside. First of all, you have to ask yourself at that particular price level, who are they buying it from? Because now when you're looking at the market in totality from where it initially started, here to here, this is definitely a bull market, right? So when you are within a bull market, why would the, the, the institutional players find any value in buying at a higher price. So those are the things that you have to ask yourself. Why will they find any value? They won't find any value. So what they will do is that they will reduce the value of the current price, right? Or Euro NZD, its current price, they will reduce it in value. And then when they reduce it in value, that's when they're going to buy it low. Because right now you've got a lot of retail traders coming into the market and buying this at a higher price. So now they've got someone to sell it to because they initially bought it. Right. So that's basically something that I wanted to share with you guys in order for you to understand some of the roles that are uh, uh, that okay within the market, especially when you're looking at it from an institutional perspective. Um, so if you've got any question, make sure that you send me a DM and then we can discuss this.